Great, welcome back to this series on migrating from MQL4 to MQL5, guidance for algorithmic traders. Today we'll talk about price, the pure building block of any EA or indicator, and we'll talk about the differences between MQL4 and MQL5 in terms of accessing price at uh, OHLCV, as well as bid and ask, as well as time, and uh, what you need to do in order to migrate from MQL4 to MQL5 to achieve this. Uh, there are certain predefined variables in MetaTrader 4 that make it quite simple for MQL4 programmers to access this data. And those predefined variables and predefined arrays are bid and ask for bid and ask prices and open, high, low, close, volume and time for predefined arrays. In MQL5, we have to rely on two structures as well as a few functions in order to get all of this information. And the use cases for these will become a lot clearer, especially the advantages of these will become a lot clearer down the line as we continue in this series of tutorials. But for now, what we need to get bid and ask information is the MQL tick struct. We need to populate it with the symbol info tick function. And for OHLCV and time, we require the copy open copy high, copy low, close, time, tick volume functions. Uh, that's one option. There is another option to copy all of this information for a given timestamp or shift index uh, using the copy rates function. And this will copy that information into a new data structure called MQL rates that we'll talk about shortly. And the third option is to use the I open, I high, I low, close, and tick volume functions that allow you to get this information. So if you're looking for just the open or just the high, or if you're looking for all of the information, you will have to execute the corresponding function with the right symbol, the right period, and the shift index that you are looking for. So to make all of this simpler, let's go on and explain how all of this works. Uh, let's discuss the data structures, MQL tick and MQL rates, and let's go through some very quick worked examples in source code to make it clear how this is done and to indicate that it's actually fairly simple, despite the fact that we have to do some additional programming. So let's get to it. Right, so for option one, if we're using the i followed by the, the relevant function for price that we need, for instance, i high, i low, etc., etc., the arguments for these functions are fairly simple. You need to take your function, provide the symbol. It's underscore symbol in MQL5, but you can, of course, use the MQL4 convention of symbol open bracket, close bracket. That is absolutely fine in MQL5 as well. And you have underscore period followed by the index of price that you're looking for. So in my case, if I wanted to find the high of the last completed bar, then I would enter one here and so on and so forth. The second option is to declare some arrays and then use the copy functions to get price into those arrays. So an example of that is, let's assume we are working with just uh, high prices at the moment. So I would declare firstly a double array, let's call that high, and I want to populate this with the most recent completed bar, that's all I want. So in this case, um, the number of bars, let's say, let's call that int num bars that I would like is equal to one. Therefore, I can use the copy high function to copy this information for this symbol, for this period, starting at the current bar zero, up to the number of bars that I would like. And finally, I want this information stored inside the high array. That's it. That is the syntax for using one of the copy functions and copy high, copy open, low, close, time, and tick volume, all of them exist and the procedure is exactly the same. The third option involves using the MQL rates data structure. In a nutshell, the struct contains all the information that we're otherwise accessing individually in the examples above, and it's simply stored like so. You've got time, open, high, low, close, tick volume, spread, and you've got real volume. You can populate the MQL rates, any MQL rates structure with the copy rates function. And that copy rates function is used as follows. Firstly, we need to define an MQL rates array for the number of 
price snapshots that we'd like. So in my case, I'd like one um, piece of data, but what I'll do here is I'll start off by creating a dynamic MQL rates array of structures, and I'll call that underscore rates. It'll be a dynamic array. The next thing I will do is I will set this as a series object, which is important because we want to be able to access things going backwards in time, starting at zero because zero is the current bar. So we say underscore rates, set this to true. So now we have our MQL rate structure ready to accept information from the copyrights function. And at this point in time, we simply invoke copyrights and we tell copyrights to get us the information for this symbol at this period, starting at this index. In my case, I'm starting at zero. The number of items I want, two, because that would be the current bar and the previous bar. And finally, that information needs to be stored in the rates data structure array that I created above. And that's it. That's how we invoke the copy rates function. Rates will now contain all the variables we saw earlier in terms of time, OHLCV, spread, and real volume, if that exists for the symbol we're looking at, uh, into the rates data structure. And then it's a simple case of, in my case, if I wanted to access index one, because index one in my example here represents the last completed bar, then in this instance, I'm going to access that information like so. So on and so forth, all the way to time, tick volume, etc. And for the last bit here, we have the MQL tick data structure. And this is the data structure that will house our bid and ask information. In order for us to get bid and ask prices, we need to first populate this struct with the most recent ticks worth of data and then access that data through the struct variables themselves. The procedure to do so is to invoke the symbol info tick function and provide the symbol for which we would like this information. And the struct, in our case, let's call this underscore tick, is something we initialized it to. Symbol info tick will capture the most recent snapshot worth of bid and ask prices, among other variables, and add it to the tick struct. We can then access this information by calling the variables ask and bid. And of course, there are other variables such as tick volume, time, etc., that we can also find inside MQL tick. Right, so we've gone through the explanation as to the differences between MQL4 and MQL5 to get to the same pieces of information. Firstly, to get bid and ask information, I initialize a latest tick, MQL tick struct over here before the on init function and invoke symbol info tick on this instance inside the on init function on the current symbol. This will populate latest tick with the information I need and allow me to print this information via print format as I've done over here. The time in milliseconds, they ask as well as bid prices from the very latest tick uh, received through symbol info tick. The first option to get OHLCV prices that we discussed was using the I functions. So that's I time, open, high, low, close, and tick volume. These functions require the current symbol, well, the symbol and period, as well as an index specification to get you the price that you need for said symbol and said period for said index. And it's really quite simple. So we've done that. Um, we've extracted time, open, high, low, close, and tick volume for the most recent completed bar on the current symbol on the current period on which this expert advisor is being deployed. Same procedure here, we declare our arrays that we'd like to extract our information into. We set the number of prices that we're interested in to two, which will get us the current bar and the most recent completed bar. Uh, invoke array set as series on all the arrays, of course, similar to MQL4. And once that's done, we invoke the relevant copy function, in this case, copy open for open, copy high for high, so on and so forth, on the symbol and period of interest. In my case, I've set them to the current symbol and current period that this expert advisor will be installed on. Starting at zero, this could have been set to any other starting index. This is purely for example's sake. And num prices, which gets me the last two prices. And uh, once that's done, we can print out the information uh, similar to before, uh, except that this time the copy functions have copied the relevant information into my arrays and I'm able to access those arrays via the index of interest. The last and final option to extract this information, as we discussed earlier, is the copyrights route. 
In this case, we need to use MQL rates data structures. And as I explained earlier, in order for us to do this, we first need, need to declare an array if we're looking for more than one MQL rate struct to be returned to us. If not, then a single is fine. In this case, I've declared an array that will be set as series uh, shortly after, an array of MQL rates structs. I then invoke copy rates on the symbol and period of interest to me, which is the current symbol and current period, starting at the current bar and going back two bars. These MQL rates snapshots will then be stored in a respective MQL rates struct in my array that I've declared earlier, leading to MQL rates structures being returned in the form of an array. Once you have the structure, you get the structure by index and access the open, low, high, close, and tick volume and time variables therein to get the information that you need. Let's now compile and execute this code just to make sure that all three versions give us the same information. And switching to MetaTrader 5, um, we have the output over here. So the first output is that of the millisecond timestamp, the ask price and bid price that we extracted using the MQL tick struct, uh, invoked and populated using symbol info tick. The functions output contains the I functions, the I high, I low, etc. Uh, the information here should be exactly the same as all the other options we used. Copy funk options were the copy open, copy close, etc. Copy rates used MQL rates structs. All three options focused on the most recent completed bar to extract all of this information. And as you can see, all three options lead to exactly the same outputs because they're focusing on exactly the same price points. And that is a tutorial on the three ways in which you can access the same OHLCV information and how you can access bid and ask information via the MQL tick data structure in comparison to MQL4, where these are available in predefined variables and predefined arrays. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, co-workers, and friends. And do subscribe to the DarwinX YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on DarwinX. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.